I'm Sebastian St. James. Today we'll tell you how to make $600 a day. That's right, $600 from passive income. Whoa, now that is impressive. So what is passive income? Well, it's not what you think, well, at least for most people. Passive income is income earned from you doing little to no work. Maybe you work on reception. Maybe only one person comes in every 20 minutes or so and you think, my job is pretty passive, but if you did not turn up to work, you wouldn't get paid and therefore that does not count. Passive income is where the hours that you work are in no way correlated to the amount that you get paid. So all your standard wage and salary work is definitely not passive. On YouTube, I've seen a number of creators who go freelance. They're freelance writers. They can do this from any country in the world. Vietnam one month, cross to Lao the next, and Thailand the month after. Am I earning passive income by living this wonderful jet setter lifestyle? Well, if you're a freelance writer, the answer is no. Because if you're not writing those articles, presumably that's what you're doing to support yourself, then you are not going to get paid. Sure, you're not necessarily getting paid by the hour, but you've got to write the articles. So it is in no way passive income. Okay. What about if I have my own business selling t-shirts, fluoro colors? They're going to have expressions on them, which are going to help mankind do unto others as you would have them do to you. That's, that's original. It's my own idea and it's going to sell a fortune. Is this a passive business? <laughs> <laughs> Not even half because you have to personally pack the t-shirts. The orders come through on your email or on your e-commerce system. You then have to go and get the t-shirt, make sure you've got the right size, the right slogan, the right color and pack it up. Oh, you've got to get the right address and put the right postage on, collect them up, run them down to the post office and make sure everything gets off in time and answer the complaints when the person buying your t-shirts realize your slogans are in fact not your own because they're actually stolen from the Bible. Ooh, who knew? So let's say I had a business where I had 20, 40 people working for me and I'll have a manager to look after them. Is that a passive income? Well, yeah, probably it is because the manager is doing the managing. You're the owner of the business, but you're having no day-to-day -day input. So that can be a passive income. But you could say, well, what about the 40 people that are working? Sure, for them, it's not a passive income. For, for you, it actually is. All right. This is all too complicated. I'm just going to be a farmer. I'm going to get myself a tractor and I'm going to passively grow crops. What could be more passive than growing a few mangoes? I hear you ask. Well, number one, good luck harvesting your mangoes with your tractor. But more importantly, if you don't go out on the land, if you don't plant, water, fertilize, do weed control and ultimately harvest, then you are not going to earn anything. Farmers who sleep do not reap. Yeah, stick that on your t-shirt. And so it is not actually passive income at all. Ask any farmer. I know I'm going to be a YouTuber. Oh, of course, the ultimate passive income gig. It's absolutely wonderful. They're all over the place. Sebastian, you do some YouTubing. What about you? Are you earning a passive income? Well, yes and no. It is true that the ad revenue that comes from your videos is passive. You create videos now and in six years time, they'll still be earning ads. Not a bad gig and it's definitely passive. But as every serious YouTuber knows, it is a full time job creating videos. It's a lot of hard work. And then it's the next video and onto the next video and you have to feed that YouTube machine. And often YouTubers end up doing longer hours than the regular nine to fivers. So the payments are passive, but certainly the amount of work that you put in is not. And if you stop being a YouTuber, if you go on holiday, days for six, 12 months. Good luck keeping a following. Okay. So YouTube is far too complicated. I'll start up a lawn mowing business. Why not easy? I can just push around a lawn mower, put out some flyers and mow a couple of neighbors lawns. Perfect. Passive income. Well, no, not passive income. You've confused a side hustle with passive income. They're not the same thing. If you don't push the mower, you don't get paid. That's not passive. Shares, of course, are passive. I'm going to trade shares. Definitely passive income there. No, it's not. What? How can it not be passive income? It's shares after all. Oh, but if you're trading, if you're buying and selling throughout the day, if you're actually making money on the ups and the downs, it's actually job. If you don't get up in the morning, you don't make any money from trading shares. So no, that is not 
passive income. In fact, when you go to your government to pay your tax, often they're taxed differently. Those people are passively invest in the long term versus active traders. Here's the word active. So if trading shares is active, what about if I just own shares and, and don't do the trading? Let's say I buy them for the long term. I buy them for five years. I get some dividends in. Occasionally, I will sell some to get some capital appreciation. Is that passive income? Absolutely. Yes, that is passive income. Truly passive income. If you go to bed and don't wake up for six months, you'll still earn money through dividends and through capital appreciation. What about rental property? Well, that is passive income as well. Let's say you own a house. Let's say you own a bunch of houses. The rent that your tenants are paying comes into, well, probably some property manager, ultimately into you. And even if you go to sleep for a week, you're still getting that rent. It's required in their contract. Now, you do have some outgoing payments. You do have some repairs on the property, but often it's the property managers that will look after that and they'll give you what's left over. So from your point of view, it can be entirely passive. Let's say you own a bunch of vending machines. So you can sell some drinks, you can sell some candy bars, you set them up in local milk bars, uh, fish and chip shops, and are they passive? Well, largely they are because you only have to visit them once a week to restock them, to collect the cash. That can be completely passive. Okay, so what about if I've got a laundromat? got a whole lot of machines set up and people can come and do their washing. Yes, that can be passive. Once again, it's like vending machines. You do have to clear out the money, etc. Now, it depends what you offer. If you offer, as do in some larger laundromats, say an ironing service, well, that's not passive. You're doing the actual ironing. So no, that's not. But if people are washing their own clothes, then that is passive. Well, I like music and oh, I can write some songs and I can sell them online and, and get royalties from my songs. Is that passive? Well, the answer is yes, the royalties are definitely passive, but it depends on what you do with that endeavor. If you're writing songs all the time, you become a bit like a YouTuber where it's work, 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 next song, next song, next song. I've got to get the next album out. Well, that's not particularly passive, is it? No. What about multi-level marketing? I can get people beneath me to actually go and sell the products and to recruit their friends and their friends will recruit other friends. It sounds like a lovely idea. Yeah. Well, if you're the founder, the top guy who came up with the original idea, yeah, it's probably passive for him, but from everyone else, you have to find more people. And the only people who really make money are those at the very top. So what is passive then? How many hours of work do I have to not do, because it's passive, to be considered it to be a passive income. We talked about vending machines. If you are there four hours a day servicing vending machines, I'd argue it's probably not passive income, although good on you and you're probably earning a lot of money. Passive income can be complete or not at all, but there is a bit of a sliding scale. So why is passive income important? Well, number one, it is scalable. What do I mean by that? Well, how many 40 hour week jobs can you have? Uh, one, <laughs> two, if I'm desperate, but, but no more. Work is inherently very limited. It doesn't scale particularly well at all. There's only one of you to make that money. On the other hand, how many dividends can you receive? What do you mean? Trick question, I don't understand. Well, how many shares can you own? How much dividends can you actually personally receive? The answer is infinite. It, it's totally passive. I can own as many shares as I want and as many dividends can come in as I want because it doesn't actually require any work from me. So that is entirely scalable. Passive income, if done right, is scalable and therefore it can earn you a lot more money. Passive income leads to financial independence. What's financial independence? Financial independence is where you don't have to get a job. You can sit at home and look after yourself financially, independent. Passive income starts to pay you money whether you're doing work or not. Once that passive income comes up to the level where it supports your outgoing expenses, then you are financially independent. So it's almost essential. You're not gonna become financially independent by doing a job, no matter how well it's paid while you're still working in that job. Number three, passive income actually leads to lower taxation. In a lot of jurisdictions, if you hold shares for more than 12 months, that's called long-term share ownership and you're taxed 
less, sometimes a 50% discount. So passive income mostly leads to paying less tax. That's a good thing. So how do you earn $600 a day every day? I have 10 ways in which you can earn $600 a day. We'll add them up. Number one, let's say that you own shares. You own $182,500 worth of stock at 10% growth. Fear not, that's the average share return on the market. That gives you $18,250 per year, which is $50 a day. Not bad for starters. Number two, we're going to own some rental property. One house, $730,000 at 5% rent equals $36,500 per year, which is $100 per day. Number three, we're going to own some vending machines. Vending machines on average earn about $100 a week. So times seven, if we have seven machines, is $700 per week, which is $100 per day. Number four, we're going to sell some digital products. So some online courses, some apps, a template, anything that you want to sell digitally, and that's gonna earn you $50 a day. Number five, let's say we start a pet sitting business. Woof, and that's going to give us $25 a day. How many dogs may we have to sit for that? Well, probably only a couple, and they can sit passively in the corner while you get on with the rest of your work. Number six, affiliate marketing. So we're gonna create a website that promotes Amazon products, just as an example. And there's lots and lots of websites that do this. They have no products of their own. They have pretty pictures, they have pretty descriptions, they have lots of marketing copy. But when you click on it, oh, it actually takes you to an Amazon site for that particular product. That's affiliate marketing. You get a kickback from that, a percentage from the sales. And we're going to say that that gives you $50 a day. You create the website once and from then on in, you get the money. Number seven, a friend of yours is wanting to start up a business so you lend him some money. You are a silent partner. You don't actually do any work in the business. Let's say it's a tech startup. He's going to write an app that's going to revolutionize, let's say pet sitting. I know, who would have thought of that? You're going to connect together people who want their pets sat with people who want to set their pets. That's gonna give you $175 a day as this app becomes very well populated. Number eight, you can own some shares that pay dividends. Let's say you have $182,500 at 5% dividends. That's quite reasonable. That gives you $9,125 per year which is $25 a day. Number nine, you're going to write yourself a book and pop it up on Amazon. You're going to promote that initially, but after a while, it will be completely passive. You're not going to write books forever, just the one. That's going to give you $25 a day. And number 10, you're going to crowdsource lend. What does this mean? There are websites who are dedicated for people to come and get loans for the house or whatever they want, maybe a car, from this crowdsourcing websites. There's a lot of them around because they can't get loans from a bank. You lend money to the crowd lending site. You may lend 5,000, you may lend $50,000. The interest rate is generally a lot higher than what they pay at a bank. So yes, there is a risk, but you're more than compensated with the high interest rate and that will give you $25 a day. Why were there 10 businesses by the way? Well because I came up with 10 ideas. The stock growth was $50, the rental $100. Right down the list the total is $600 a day from your 10 passive businesses. That's not bad. So with that cornucopia of ideas there, fear not, you do not have to do every single one of them. You can choose from the ideas which I've come up with or come up with some passive income ideas of your own, but make sure you research them properly first. As part of your research, you should watch this video here. It will tell you a bit more about how to make some money. I'll see you in the next video right now. Go ahead and click.